All right, if you have a PodGo, this is by far the most important video that you can watch to sound good when you're playing live. I'm gonna walk through a preset I just made step by step, show you exactly what I did so you can learn how to get great tone every time. There are five things, so don't miss out, don't skip out, because three and four are the ones that I've been loving. They've been making my tone sound, it's been my favorite time to play the PodGo has been recently since I implemented this, so don't, um, don't cut out early, watch three and four, definitely watch number five, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you some bonus, like non-tone tips so you can get the most out of the pod go. Let's jump right in. The first thing is get an amp that will fit your guitar. Like understand your instrument first. I have this Reverend Gil Paris Natural. I love this thing. It has two humbuckers that are not very high output and a single coil in the middle. I won't use the single coil today, most likely. But this guitar is way different than my uh both of those guitars. The Telecaster, which has single coils, and then the Revolta, which has higher output humbuckers. So know your guitar, try to understand what your guitar is like, and then find an amp to um, complement your guitar. I'm picking today the Line 6 Elmsley, and I've dialed it in like this. I've gotten the sag down, the hum down, the ripple down. I don't usually like a lot of that. The bias and bias excursion, I've actually dialed these in a little differently than I normally would. A lot of times I like to bring up the bias. It, on this amp, it just made it sound uh, too boxy. So let me just show you what our clean tone is. Just a nice clean amp. But usually when I bring this up, it sounds better, but it added like way too much bass. Made it way too thin. So went that route. Left the drive pretty much in the middle, got rid of some bass, bumped some mids. Um, you may pick a different amp to correspond with your guitar, but I'm just showing you the settings on this. I didn't do anything to the cab yet. I just, this is the stock cab and no, no cuts, no mic change placement or anything. Just gonna stay with that and then we'll develop our tone from there. All right, number two is pick a drive that complements your amp. So what you wanna do is you don't want two drastically different tones. You want it to sound like your amp is just being pushed. So I usually like to use overdrives uh, more like a boost, but I did wanna say don't be afraid to add that drive, especially when we're playing live sometimes, and I have been at fault for this, is that when I click on an overdrive, it, it, it just doesn't do enough. And I've learned lately to go ahead and not be afraid to crank the drive. So I'd like to pick a more transparent overdrive. The the Tima, the Timmy in the PodGo is one of my favorites. I just pulled down the gain a little bit, um, but uh, I think it sounds great. You see how my tone didn't really change? I mean, it changed. It got way more overdriven, yes, but it doesn't sound like a, a completely different tone. It just sounds like my amp is just being uh, pushed. And there's a good bit of a volume jump as well. And then I'm on the neck pickup. Here's the bridge pickup. So one thing I wanna point out is like, get to know your instrument, the pickups, but also be familiar with the, the pickup selector. You can get a lot of tones with just the amp in your pickup selector and then an overdrive in your pickup selector. There are four different tones we have already. We have just the amp and the neck pickup, the cleanest tone, just the amp and the bridge pickup, amp and overdrive neck pickup, Amp, overdrive, and bridge pickup. It's so much fun, I love the way that sounds. Now that was one and two, before we get to three and four, which are my favorite uh, things I've been doing that make me fall in love with my PodGo tone all over again, I wanted to give you something for free. I put together a PodGo Tone Secrets Guide. It's a PDF full of all the things I like to do to get great tone. If you like having something to reference with pictures and screen grabs, you will love this. Go click the link below, it's my gift to you. Okay, number three, utilize the retro reel to bring some realness back to your amp, back to your tone. If digital modelers are getting a bad rap because of the, the, the harshness, then let's fix that by adding some 
tape to it. So you may have already noticed that I, I labeled this preset the HWL faux real. <laughs> Here are the settings. They're kind of minimal and you can dial them into taste, but I find that this works the best for me. We'll do a, a, a B. The wow and flutter is kind of down under two, saturation around two. I think the texture's the same and I slowed the tape down to 7.5 inches per second. Here it is on and off. Now there is a little volume bump there, but there's also this realness. It kind of shaves off the high end and gives it this texture that makes it sound more like a real amp. I just, I love it. You still have that sizzle of the amp, but it's not, it's not harsh anymore. Let's add some drive with it off. You can hear it really well on some light picking. Now, tip number four, and this is another one of my favorite things to, to sound good live. And this just gets your tone like studio ready, or like I said, live ready. And that is because we're already stuck, but I do this on the Helix and the HX Stomp too. Because we're already stuck with an EQ, I, I sometimes use it before the amp and use it as a boost or a drive, which is a great option. But I've also been doing this. I've been using the low and high shelf to shelve off a little bit of the low end and boost a little bit of the high end at some given frequencies. So I'm taking out negative 1.9 uh, decibels below 500 hertz right here. And then I'm boosting 1.9, anywhere around two. You can do this to taste. Uh, and actually I got that a little lower than I wanted to. Somewhere up uh, like 600 and something. And what this does is it just, if you, if you see your tone as like this flat line, it'll boost the high end and drop the low end just a little bit. It's kind of like the tilt, but it's, instead of just tilting everything, it's it's just bringing at these points, uh, bringing up the highs and down the lows. And it just, like I said, it just makes, it brings everything together in a really good way. I'm gonna turn off the retro reel so we can just focus on the high and low shelf. <laughs> So now let's partner that with the retro reel and our tone is just gonna be. Same without both. Let's do that again with some drive without the effects on. Now the fifth tip is to dial in your wet effects a little heavier than you think you need to. So we have our delay here and our reverb. First the delay, I just got a simple delay. Um, I put the scale at 75, which I think it brought it in at 75. And I set it at a quarter, which gives us 75% of a quarter, which is a dotted eighth if you do your math. So you get a dotted eighth and a quarter. And I bring it all the way up to 50. Now if you don't know, 50 
is 100% delay and 100% tone. Anything below 50, you, your tone stays the same, but your delay effect starts getting quieter. Anything above 50, your delay effect stays at 100%, but then your tone starts getting quieter. So it goes 100% wet. So 50, 50 is, is right in the middle. It's 100% of both tones. Here is our delay setting. And then the same thing with our reverb. I grabbed the Glitz reverb, uh, brought the decay up, I brought the mix up a bit, I brought up some stuff to taste that I like to do with the modulation mix, and I added a little more depth. Here's what that sounds like on its own. Now for some of you, you might be thinking that is way too wet and I understand how when we are alone in our rooms with our headphones on or listening through studio monitors, how in isolation that can seem really wet, but in my experience, and I have this unique privilege, opportunity to dial in my Podgo settings live at my church with my full sound system. And what I've learned is that when I dial things in here at home in isolation, I tend to hear every little detail, every delay repeat, all this reverb, and it seems too much, so I, I back it off a little bit. And then when I get there live, I'm like, I don't hear a lot of what I was hearing at home. I need to dial that right back in. And so I tend to find that the wet effects need to be a little heavier than you think they need to be just to sound normal when you're playing live. I even have a, a video, I think it was about the, on the Helix, but it's the same principle applies that you can't hear reverb. Like I did an experiment where I had a, a tone dialed in with just delay and then a tone dialed in with delay and a bunch of reverb. And you're like, whoa, those tones are way different. Then I put them both in a mix and you could hardly tell. You could tell the difference, but it didn't sound, the, the reverb -y one sounded way better, but it didn't sound like it was because there was a bunch of reverb. It just, it just, it made the tone fit in the mix a lot better. So here's the delay and reverb together. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I have some bonus settings to tell you about these non-tone settings to get the most out of your pod go. But before we jump into those, I want to let you know if you need good tones right now, Sunday ready, check out my Sunday ready pack. It's 10 premium presets of different amps that you can sound good right away. You can just plug in, sound good, choose the amp that you think feels best with your guitar, the delays, reverbs, everything is set up for you. All you gotta do is plug in a play. I'll link that down below, go check it out. Okay, some things that we can do to get the most out of our pod go when we're playing live. Try putting some parameters of your wet section on expression one. We have an expression pedal, what are we gonna use it for? You could use it for volume, but we do have a volume knob on our guitar, so sometimes I like to get creative with the expression. So, our wet section, we've dialed it in like this, but if we right click here and expression one, we have these little arrows that we can play with. I'm going to put the feedback right here, and then I'm gonna crank the feedback when it's at its max. Now we'll go to the reverb, and we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna right click, expression one. I'm gonna move this little arrow up to where we have it. It's already a pretty ambient setting, but then I'm going to bring the decay pretty far up, um, somewhere in here, but I'm also gonna do the mix on this. We're gonna bring this little arrow up, this is what I wish the Helix had. And then we're gonna go all the way up to 50. Cause just bring, whoops, this little arrow. That way, oh, one thing you might need to do, I'm glad I did this. Um, expression, the toe to switch between expression one and expression two is pre-assigned to this uh, wah pedal. So we want to unassign that. So I right clicked, went to bypass assign and clicked none. It'll still move, but it won't um, turn it on and off when we switch back and forth. Looks like I also need to do that for the volume pedal. Put that right there. So now we can see our expression one is moving the um, wet section here. So 
This is where we had it. And what's cool about putting it on expression is that you can mess around with it in real time uh, and dial in as much as you want. So you don't have to put it all the way wet. You can do like halfway if, if, if that's too wet for you. So now that it's connected to the expression pedal, you now have a real, in real time connection to your tone, your wet section. You can dial it into taste and really hear what you're doing live and have full control. Okay, what are some other things we can do? Well, you can assign a foot switch to boost up and down the drive on your amp. You can also boost up and down the gain or the level of your overdrive to get a boost signal, but some of those things have consequences, like anything we do to affect volume, even though this level is clean volume, it's not gain, it's not overdrive, it's sending more input into our amp, which is just gonna compress more, and may, you may love that, but that's the consequence. It's kind of like the master, the master volume on an amp affects the tone, where channel volume is clean volume, pure volume, but it's still coming before some of these other effects. And if there's anything I know about the Pod Go, it's that slamming too much volume into some of these wet effects can produce some unwanted uh, artifacts and sounds we don't like. And so what we can do to ensure that won't happen is come to our output level right here, click the output block, and then we can assign a foot switch let's say foot, foot switch six, put this up to zero. And then when we click it, let's make sure it's right on zero. Then when we click it, let's say we want a three decibel boost for let's say a solo. So we are literally just taking our tone. We're not changing at all. We're just boosting how loud it is. for solos you can really stick out in the mix if you want more there are plenty of other tutorials on this channel I definitely want you to go check those out but if you really want to get serious and learning how to master the pod go I have developed a pod go course you can check that out below it's a full all-inclusive step-by-step process how to set it up how to do different routing options how to dial in each effect to get the tone you want so I'm not just telling you what to do but you can actually understand what you're doing so that you can create tones and teach other people. I have a bunch of students in the course and they are loving how they can get great tones anytime they want. So go check that out down below. Also, I want you to watch this video right here because we dive deeper into some elements to get your pod go to sound great. When you play live, I'll see you over there. Bye.